the White House, Speaker Boehner, Leader Pelosi, Senator McConnell, and I continue to have discussions on a staff level <coughs> to keep the government functioning. <coughs> Excuse me. We Democrats are united. We need to stop these devastating sequestration cuts from our middle class and, of course, the military. Getting rid of sequestration is not a new goal for us. We've been fighting this for years. These meat acts cuts are terrible for us. And we don't have much time to complete these necessary budget negotiations. Next week, the Senate and House are out of session. When the Senate gets back from its re recess, we'll have a number of major deadlines. We have, of course, the debt ceiling. That's November 5th. Uh, we have the government is going to be out of business on December 11th. S Speaker Boehner's leaving at the end of this month. So the last thing we need is another manufactured crisis because all it does is terribly damage our economy. So let's hope my Republican colleagues will take negotiations seriously and not wait till the last minute. And in the process, every when we wait till the last minute on debt ceiling, it hurts the economy, it hurts the world economy. And it's the same for these threats of closing the government. As you know, um, McCarthy's opponent said today, and I'm paraphrasing, uh, I can't guarantee there won't be a default in the debt, and I can't guarantee the government will stay open. So that's where we are. Senator Durbin. We've had more reruns uh, in the United States Senate this year than any time in history. Vote after vote, over and over again, the same issues are brought before us with the same result. And what we know is happening is we're losing time. We're losing time to fund this government appropriately and to make sure that we don't hurt the American economy and kill the jobs in this country. I don't know what Senator McConnell's waiting for. If he's waiting to be delivered by outgoing Speaker Boehner, uh, perhaps that's his plan. But all of the things that the House has failed to do and people are praying Boehner will do before he leaves are starting to stack up. And really, it's an impossible agenda for him to achieve. The most important thing now is a negotiation, a serious, honest, bipartisan negotiation with the White House so that we can avoid a government shutdown when the debt ceiling expires and certainly to make sure that we go beyond a continuing resolution, a CR. Those on the outside may believe that a CR is just business as usual, no real change. I can tell you as the senator, ranking senator on the subcommittee on defense, the opposite is true. If we continue a CR in the Department of Defense, it will hurt us. It will jeopardize readiness and it will mean even costlier projects for us to make sure we have the weapons to protect America. It's a waste of taxpayers' dollars and it's dangerous for the men and women who serve us in the military all the more reason for us to get this done. This bill that's on the floor now, today, that the President is likely to veto, the Defense Authorization Bill, is a bill which in substance, by and large, we are going to support. But we have to get the funding levels at an honest level so that non-defense spending is treated fairly as well, to make sure the men and women in uniform are taken care of, but so is medical research and education and the Veterans Administration and Homeland Security. Now's the time to do it. I don't know what Senator McConnell's waiting for. Senator Schumer. Thank you. Well, we're a month away, less than a month away, from defaulting on the federal debt, sending the economy into a tailspin, costing the country countless jobs. Now, rather than acting responsibly to calm the markets and move forward with legislation to ensure we can pay our bills, House Republicans are running for Speaker, threatening to shut down the government and default on our debt. It's very sad, but it's also very telling that candidates running in the leadership race are trying to outflank each other on these issues. There used to be a time when most Republicans would dismiss leadership candidates who pledged to use shutdown and hostage-taking tactics to get their way. They said they were gadflies. Now, it's almost a prerequisite for winning. Watching the three-ring circus of the House leadership elections would be entertaining if the prospects weren't so terrifying for jobs and our economy. 
rather than moving in a reasonable direction to deal with the deadlines we face in a timely manner, Republicans seem to be moving closer and closer to the edge of a cliff. Now that we know debt ceiling expires November 5th, we have to move quickly. The longer we wait, the greater chance of default, the greater chance of government shutdown. We need to get into serious negotiations now and conclude them very quickly. We're seeing candidates pledge economic destruction in order to win a few votes on the hard right caucus. Well, the grown-ups in the Republican Party need to grab the reins and move quickly to do two things. One, work with Democrats to forge a budget agreement that keeps the government open and protects jobs. Two, avert the threat of an economic catastrophe by passing a clean debt ceiling now inst instead of waiting for the last minute. Senator Murray. Yeah, you know, two years ago, Republicans had just pushed us, our country, into a completely unnecessary economy rattling government shutdown. And when that shutdown ended just 16 days later, Republicans finally agreed to work with us and do what Democrats had wanted to do four months earlier sit down at the table, table find some common ground, make some compromises, and reach a two year bipartisan budget deal. Our bipartisan deal restored investments in education and health care, research and defense jobs, and put a stop to the constant crises we were facing for two years. It helped our economy continue to recover and create jobs. Now, as we all know, that deal expired last week, and there is no reason we should not be able to do it again. More and more Republicans are coming out every day urging their leaders to work with Democrats and reach a deal. Even Republican leaders now accept they need to negotiate over restoring the investments hit by those automatic cuts. And with Speaker Boehner leaving and the debt limit set to hit in just a few short weeks, there is no reason to wait. So let's get this done and let's do it in a way that works for our middle class families and for our economy. We know a bipartisan budget deal is possible. We did it before. We rolled back the automatic cuts equally across domestic and defense investments in the last deal. We can do that again. We didn't let divisive issues bog us down or push us off track, and we can do that again, too. Republicans pushed the Tea Party aside to keep the government open, and now they need to push them aside once again so we can get this deal done for the families we all represent. I believe that uh, we're nearing a point, as really all of us have said here this afternoon, <coughs> that we're going to have to start making some decisions. Number one, we need to find out what the offsets are going to be. We, until we do that, we can't have a top line, the so-called 302, 302 allocations. And th third, we have to make sure there's equal um, increases for defense and non-defense, and finally, we have to have an agreement on riders. We're not there yet. I would hope by the end of this week we'll, be, we'll make some more progress than we have in the first few days. Senator, in this, Senator, in this budget deal that you're <coughs> negotiating, um, there is a, I guess you could call it a rider, there is a line in appropriations that goes back to 1996. It effectively bars the Centers for Disease Control from studying guns as a health issue. Given all the news that we've heard and the 33,000 Americans, not in mass shootings, but who died from gunshot wounds, is this budget deal that you're negotiating, is this going to be the time when you push to undo that language we, we that bars them from studying? I've had a number of meetings today with Democratic senators, um, and more than one meeting, and we are engaged. We believe that what has gone on in America, think about what's happened so far this year, more than 200 mass killings. 48 schools, we've had mass killings of little kids, uh, including the students at the college in Oregon. So we're going to move forward. We have a program. We're going to do some press on this on Thursday. So we're off and running and to make sure that American people understand we are going to do everything within our power to uh, let the American people know that we're not kowtowing to the gun lobbies in this country. Should that, should that CDC prohibition be modified? Or You're asking me. Yes. We should get rid of it, but uh, that will be one of the things we'll deal with. Mr. Zinger, uh, you just said that you want increases 
in defense and domestic programs usually. Um, when it comes to offsetting those increases, do uh, you support using a logo like the bill that the Democrats just voted against? And is it your sense that that's what's going to happen? If there's going to be increases for defense, there's going to be increases for non-defense. That's part of the, the, the guideline that we've laid down. The answer is this. Uh, I don't know how many of you have noticed, it's hard not to notice, with all the money being spent on paid advertising uh, on television for fantasy sports. It's, and they even advertise on TV about the multi-million dollar wins that people can get and have had. <clears throat> and we learned yesterday through a nice piece written in the New York Times and other places <clears throat> that uh, there's absolute scandalous conduct taking place with those uh, programs, fantasy sports. Uh, some of the owners of those uh, programs uh, know what's going on in the other, uh, their competitors, and so they can make a lot of money and that's what they've done. So the answer is yes. And I think it also should be a warning shot to everybody that online gaming is a real scary thing and we'd better look at all of it. Senator Reed, what will your program on guns include? Can you give us some <clears throat> well, yes, uh, we, we, we're going to talk about this in more detail on Thursday. And I think in fairness to my caucus, <clears throat> we have a number of meetings that we've already conducted, but we need others. We're gonna, we're gonna make sure this is inclusive, that all my caucus is involved in this, and um, we're not gonna outline stuff here today. And all you folks can wait for another 48 hours before we do that. Thanks, everybody.